the way I define myself as a couturier and couture is no effort or expense is spared to create an exquisite garment. In the couture, you have a big atelier. You have a lot of different people who specialize in different kinds of things. I have to have all of those abilities because I'm one person. What we have here in America is you can take the elements of couture and run with that, and there's more latitude for that here. When I realized that I could make a living doing this, I decided that I was going to make a line of hats, and I needed to teach myself what I wanted to learn. Don't just know sewing. Don't just know fashion. I can do drywall. I can mix paint to match color. I can do electricity. You know, I have a lot of different skill sets. I have made my living off my craft since I was in college, first in window display and then in clothing design. And there are common threads in all of the different crafts. You can create illusions, and it's all because I understood things from different disciplines. So it's all connected. Craft without creativity is just dead. I learned to focus on the customer because if the person wearing it feels like it's gonna fall off or they're gonna lose it or they're gonna look like a fool, they will never wear it again. And that's what directed me into couture as opposed to art to wear. Because my whole thing was I didn't want the piece wearing the customer, I wanted the customer wearing the piece. I have three what I call lines of inquiry because I, for me it's all about asking a question. So I have what I call souffle, I have cut work and I have leafing. And the cut work and leafing have started overlapping to create something a little bit different. This cut work piece is a three-layer sandwich. There's pewter organza underneath, then there's the red taffeta which receives the cutting, then there is black net over, and then the whole thing is quilted together with a free motion metallic stitch. I've been able to make, to bend the craft in service of an aesthetic, and part of the reason I can do that with these old school techniques is that I understand what modern fabrics can do and a lot of what a lot of what I can create cannot be done really in natural fibers. The leaf jacket is a little bolero jacket. It's actually cut as a kimono sleeve. It has a bracelet length sleeve. Collar is a little bit of a stand-up collar with a bit of a sweetheart neckline. It has one button in the front. Fabric is essentially made in one piece. I've cut the little leaves. They're actually quilted together with what's called a free motion embroidery stitch and metallic thread. But it's all done in such a way that there are no darts and no seams in the entire piece. The souffle piece is a modified cocoon coat. It has a, a feather collar that's all made out of fabric feathers as opposed to real feathers. It's a black organza over a brick colored organza and the entire shaping of the piece is achieved through different degrees of manipulation like smocking and braiding and chain stitch. As I've gone along, there have been questions that I've asked myself and then I had to develop a range of techniques to answer that question. This range of techniques then, when I create the pieces, it informs the aesthetic so the pieces have an actual stylistic unity, but it is because of the craft. And the reason I say small is the new big is that if you make something that is so exceptional and so beautifully crafted and so difficult to knock off because it is so complicated or otherwise exceptionally made, then that is your salvation. People who find me know what they're looking at and they know that it is not something they can get anywhere else. When it's all said and done, it's tailored specifically for a particular customer. It fits beautifully, it's finished beautifully. That's really what couture is.